Welcome to Med Twitter This Week. I'm Chris the Chu Man Chu, and I'm the host of Med Twitter This Week. I have a special guest for you this week. I've talked about him several times in the past, and today I have Dr. Travis Smith. He's going to bring us some of his favorite tweets, and we're going to have a little discussion about what he's been doing on Med Twitter. So we'll talk about it after the intro. <music> Welcome back to Med Twitter this week. I have Dr. Travis Smith. Welcome to the show. Chris, thanks for having me, man. Pleasure to be here. So you have in the in the background helped me out for the last several weeks, have you not? I I, I have contributed a little bit. Um, it's kind of my niche. I feel like we have similar interests in, in you know looking at tutorials and fun uh, you know Med Twitter tweets. So I I found it um, it kind of uh, imperative to to send some good tweets to you. So actually, we, we have, you know, you are very active in, in Twitter in, in several different ways. And, I, you know, I, I sort of want to highlight them and also sort of interested in how you got involved in each of these. So one is I know you're highly involved in CP solvers, especially recently with the virtual morning report. You know, we had we had Moses on very recently as well. But you have been doing tutorials after several of these cases, and they're just very comprehensive and amazing. I just don't know how you have time to do that. Um, but you, you've been doing those. You've been active on, on med tutorials where you have been slowly feeding me some of the more popular tweets of the week. Um, mm -hmm. Just And you know a lot of the same people I do. Just how did you get involved in all these things and how do you have time to do it? I, I think it all first started, um, you know, having uh, medical students hearing what they listen to. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll listen to Curbsider. So, I mean, it might've been like a year ago when I started listening to some of the episodes and, you know, I do emergency medicine. They have a lot of internal medicine stuff, but I'm like, man, this is like, you know, really good stuff. Just hearing other people give good uh, lecture topics helps. And so I started listening to them. I heard Tony Brew on there. I started following him. And then, um, he kind of sent messages out about, you know, med tutorials and I loved reading them. And so that's kind of how I got started with him. Um, and then kind of through that, I read this book called Deep Medicine. It had uh, by Eric Topple and it was talking about uh, human DX. So I started getting involved with that, writing cases and they sent out an email like, hey, do you want to present to CP solvers? I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love to because I listened to them as well. And so I presented a case and the first case I presented to was to uh, Moses and I think um, someone else from his school. And then I, I think I did another case to Anne Marie Comfer and um, you know, she's always, she's on CP solvers and she's now doing this unremarkable labs with uh, uncle Bob <laughs> um, and she, she's brilliant. Um, but you know, so I um, started doing uh, the cases um, with them. And then when virtual morning report during COVID came out, um, I started participating and um, was in the chat and there's tons of smart people in that chat and just going through it and just like seeing the per clinical pearls. I'm like, Hey, we have to like highlight the stuff that people are saying in here. So uh, I get the chat afterwards, it gets sent to me and I kind of go through it, add some articles. I put in clinical pearls of kind of what they're saying. So people who aren't participating can read it. And it's just a great way to learn kind of tying everything in together. So that's kind of the quick, you know, two minute, um, you know, tie into everything. It's just, it boggles the mind. And it's just so amazing what you're doing. I, I really, really encourage any of my listeners or watchers or followers, if you're not following Travis on Twitter, you really have to, because he is constantly putting out amazing content. Um, so one of the other things you do, so we, we talked a little bit about med tutorials, and like I said, you've been feeding me a couple of highlights every week. So, and the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to um, augment some of the ones that I've I've been seeing because, to be honest, you know, I only follow so many people, and some of the tweets I'm completely missing. So, having a, a reference and source like med tutorials is amazing, and I also encourage a lot of my listeners and followers to to follow them. How do you guys decide? which ones you're going to highlight. I, I do know that people try to tag med, med tutorials if they're, if mm -hmm. they, they want that looked at, but I mean, are there, are there, um, are there, are there threads that are sitting there that you guys haven't highlighted? Is this, are, there, I mean, how, what, what's the process like there? So the process, um, Inya is a, a resident that um, Tony knows and I kind of onboarded with her. So, you know, she'll go out and find, um, tutorials, tag med tutorials, 
Um, we'll bookmark them. We'll keep them in the bookmark section. Um, I have a couple people that I follow that when I get a, that dings when they tweet. Um, and like so we kind of like Tony, yeah, like Tony, you know, Tony, Avi Cooper, Elliot Tapper, uh, you, of course, um, you know, Robbie and Reza and, 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 you know, all the infectious disease people that put out tutorials. So I have a, you know, a list of probably like 30 people that I get notifications when they tweet sometimes is overwhelming, but, you know, kind of keep them there and, and kind of, you know, just search um, hashtag tutorial to try to find some new stuff. Yeah. So I, I use the bookmark function a lot. So if you guys want to see my gift, uh, how did a bookmark a uh, tweet? And actually I also have a way in which you can do a notification. So not everyone knows about the bell in Twitter as well. So um, I, I really, that's sort of how I work too. So, you know, as I see a tweet, I, definitely bookmark it. And then what I do is I just, over the last week before an episode like this, I go through and say, all right, which are the ones that I really enjoyed that I bookmarked? And those are the ones I usually decide on. Now this last week was sort of a slow week for me. I was a little busy with other things. So that's why I decided to bring you on this week because I thought you would definitely bring on some really good tweets. And should we go through a couple of the ones that you suggested? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. So actually, so before we go on to that, I just want to say that Tony Brew actually just had a tutorial because we're filming today on a Wednesday and it literally came out about an hour ago. And I actually, I spent a little time going through it. So I just want to make sure we highlight that. I have a oh, feeling yeah. that to, to, a lot of Tony's and Avi's stuff will, or, or Hannah's stuff will end up being on, on um, Curious Clinicians at some point. So, but you know, it was about uremia causing platelet dysfunction. And I thought it was really, really interesting. I had never, ever heard of Guan guanid succinic acid or GSA. So <laughs> I definitely encourage people to go through the whole thing because um, Tony's tweets just, they never disappoint. So make sure you mm -hmm. put the bell for him. So um, I'm not going to believe that too much, but I do want to bring up that first tweet that you said you wanted to uh, review with us today. So as you've been saying, you've been following a lot of ID programs. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in fact, I think we've highlighted a couple in the past, but this one was about tick-borne infections or TBI. I'll, I'll, read, I'll read the tweet. So tick-borne infections, it's summer equals tick bites. And then they put an emoji of a ladybug. <laughs> and we have new faculty, fellows, residents, interns, and students coming from different places. This tutorial is an overview of TBI mainly in the US. So I thought it was, honestly, it was, I'm impressed by how comprehensive in 20, 20 tweets, they were able to get through a bunch of different types of tick-borne infections with some beautiful images. Were there any specific pearls that you wanted to highlight from this from this thread? Um, probably the I like I like the pictures in a lot of these. So I like when they go over rashes. You know, they talk about Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and you know they they have nice pictures to the uh, purpuric rash. Um, you know, they show pictures of urethema migraines, and um, you know. There's a, a, a cool little picture of some um, uh, stuff on tularemia. So, I mean, there's just so many pictures, just how they go through and do this. I mean, whoever does this account is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got to so, follow them because I, I had no idea about this before you brought it up to my attention. I mean, them and, and Indiana University um, and Mayo Clinic ID, I mean, they're just all the time, awesome, cool threads. I mean, it's a quick way to you know, learn about something that, you know, you don't see that often. They're zebras, but I mean, heck, learning about the zebras is, is always good. Um, and, and so definitely recommend, you know, um, following them. It brings us back to the, uh, the episode of the Curbsiders not so long ago about tick-borne infections, specifically Lyme disease. We're taught a lot about, okay, if you have Lyme, then you don't really have Lyme until that that tick has been sucking on you for 48 hours. And then after that, then make sure that they bring you the tick so you can look at it and make sure it's the right type of tick. But then I think one interesting thing I got away from that episode we have the curbsiders was Paul Sachs was like, like really how bad is a single dose of doxy in when you're, when you're treating as prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, that's, he's, he's sort of right. Like, what if it was on for 40 hours, but they, they, they couldn't bring you the tick or maybe they didn't realize, you know, like, how, like when you're weighing your risks and benefits, like how bad is that doxy? I don't really know, but it's definitely changed my way of thinking about it. I don't know. What, have you heard well, it? Most people are doxy deficient anyways. And I think that's the, you know, right. 
Yes. They have some weird rash, you know, hey, you know, they're doxy deficient, you know, f- you know, it's not going to hurt them. And that's definitely something I've heard among uh, my ID colleagues. And I think the first time I heard it was doing a board review session where they're talking about tick-borne infections. And I think the speaker was an ID doc and was telling us about doxy deficiency. I was like, oh, I've never heard of it that way. But <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think those, I really enjoy, encourage people to take a look at this thread there. Like you said, they're amazing pictures and there's a picture of the zebra on there too. So <laughs> yeah, for tularemia, I think. So, um, so let's go on to a couple of these other tweets that you, we wanted to highlight. The first would be from one of my friends, Cyrus Askin, and he is a critical care fellow. He did a tweet that I think was very typical. And one of the best parts about Twitter was he just showed us a, a, an awesome ultrasound about a loculated pleural effusion. Now, you're an ED doc, right? So mm-hmm. um, are, are you doing POCUS by the bedside and looking for these pleural effusions? It's in here. Oh. It's in my case. I, I, have, I have mine as well. Oh, yes. Twins. It is, it is, you know, using it less with COVID around, but, you know, um, I still love it. It's great. Yeah, and, and luckily I'm not sponsored. I don't have CME, so we can definitely talk about the butterfly. No one's going to care. Mm-hmm. But um, I definitely love it. And I, I think this is just this is some great images. And not only is he giving the images, but he's also talking about, like, what, you know, what you're looking for in the images, how are you doing with plural fluid and sort of some of the other, other tips and tricks. Were there any specific plurals you thought were really interesting in his tweet? Um, you know, I think more, more or less just highlighting, you know, how quick and easy it is to use this. I mean, it's, you know, it just makes it so simple. I mean, it, you know, you plug this into your phone, um, you know, just bedside. I mean, you can diagnose people right there. And, and I think just, the more and more people highlight ultrasound, there's a couple good POCUS um, um, Twitter. I think it's one is like at POCUS, but a couple people that just do ultrasound videos. Um, I mean, it's great. The more people um, are able to kind of use this kind of at bedside and, you know, I can learn through doing this. I mean, just see what it looks like. It's awesome. Well, it's, it's, it's our colleagues in, in emergency medicine that have really led the way in, in, in POCUS in general, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and so, you know, I, I think um, in, with, with the current state of things and how internal medicine have, have really realized the utility of having this tool by the bedside, I think, think um, it really needs to be highlighted. So I, I completely agree. So sort of on that same theme, you also shared Robbie's recent tweet about lights criteria, SAG, and sort of looking just at effusions versus x ray both in the lungs and the belly. Um, Gosh, Robbie's just so smart. I mean, I, I love talking to him and Reza. They, I mean, he is he is the mathematician, right? Oh, yeah. And I, I highlight it for two reasons. One, because he's awesome. Uh, you know, the, one of the nicest guys, you know, you ever talk to. And, and humble. Um, and humble. Oh, yes, definitely. And, you know, the way he's able to explain stuff, I think, is, you know, makes it even easier to listen. Plus, I always forget about you know, SAG and LICE criteria. So I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This just couples both together. So now I can, you know, relearn uh, LICE criteria again. Um, So both of those tweets just came up at the same time. I'm like, it's just a a perfect marriage between the two. Um, And if you don't follow Robbie, I mean, you know, I'm sure your your listeners do, but um, I mean, he's great to follow and, and CP solver stuff. The schemas and illness scripts are just remarkable. Oh, totally, totally. I, I, I definitely encourage people to take, check this one out. Now, the last two that we, um, you wanted to highlight were sort of more in the vein of historical medicine. These are things that I would totally see Adam Rodman retweeting. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that's, you know, he, he got me, you know, I love podcasts. I listen to, I mean, probably there's 50 of them that I go through and listen to, but he was one of my original, um, you know, first ones with the curbsiders that I listened to um, in bedside rounds. And, you know, every time I see historical medicine tweets, you know, I uh, get excited. So um, the Lindsay always does really good ones. And I've had her, um, she has a, a page on med tutorials on the website that we have a bunch of her threads. So you can go to medtutorials.com and see those, um, you know, but hers about kind of decapitation, kind of morbid, but, you know, interesting, you know, historical thing to go through. So I was like, why not? Let's put it on there. <laughs> Now, she, she actually has a, a, a really active uh, Instagram as well, because so many of the things that she talks about just lends itself so well to graphical representation or just 
old timey photos or illustrations. I mean, medicine is just full of illustrations. So um, I don't know. Do you, do you, are you on Instagram? Do you follow her on there? No, I don't have Instagram and I'm like, eh, maybe I should do it. But man, there's just so much stuff on Twitter. I, I can't, I don't have enough time for, <laughs> you know, work and all my kids and you know, this, I think that would just add, that would be the tipping point. <laughs> Understandable. I think one interesting thing about the sort of the, the morbidity, morbidity and the morbid stuff about uh, decapitation and the guillotine is, you know, I think recently a lot of us, at least I have been thinking about this because, you know, 4th of July just passed and, you know, I spent some good time watching Hamilton on uh, Disney Plus and, you know, La, uh, the Marquis, Marquis de Lafayette, you know, was, mm -hmm. was a big part of uh, the American Revolution. And then he went off to then try to free France. And so definitely t thinking about the decapitations in the French Revolution was close on hand, like when I was thinking about this. I think one of the interesting things there, she was like, apparently the guillotine was still in use until 1977. Mm -hmm. I was like, so. Yeah, um, yeah I, I had no idea too. And, and, you know, she put some really good pictures and stuff in there, um, you know, just to give you a sense on, um, you know, including even Darth Vader, but awesome pictures. Um, you know, they tied in the consciousness to cardiac arrest you know, people being conscious after a cardiac arrest. So, I mean, she does a lot of good stuff tying in, um, you know, the tweet to medicine. So. Fantastic. Now, do you want to talk a little bit about this last one about an angina pectoris? Oh, the one by uh, Therusha? Yes. I think I saying is, yeah, this one was definitely an, an Adam, Adam Rodman-esque, um, you know, tying in to, you know, where, where people get names from, names of diseases. And I had no idea, you know, where it came from, how far back, um, and, and how it was um, related to Dr. Uh, Heberdeen, like Heberdeen's nodes. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Now tying in chest pain to Heberdeen. I mean, I, I think um, Adam should do a, a bedside rounds on, on this. And the other thing I kind of got sidetracked on this tweet was on the uh, fifth or si on the fifth tweet, there's actually, they talk about Edward Jenner and, um, you know, he did uh, perform an autopsy with John Hunter, but there's a, a GIF with um, the guy from Breaking Bad. And I didn't, had, you know, this guy, I had no idea that he was on uh, um, uh, Price really? is Right. Yeah. Did you see that? So well, I, I, I sent I, well, me out a little Google thing. Uh, I didn't realize that, was, that that's the, the actual the, actor who did Breaking Bad. He was on Price is Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did, you know, I spent a little bit of time <laughs> looking that up and watch it. So I thought that was pretty interesting, but I mean, he did a, just a phenomenal um, tutorial here. I mean, this was just solid work. So I'm now following him. Um, and because of you, I'm now following him as well. He's a cardiologist it looks like. So mm -hmm. it, it's definitely within his wheelhouse. I'm looking forward to what else he has um, in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so those were our tweets for the week. I thought it was sort of fun to sort of go through them. And I really appreciated having Travis come and talk, talk to us about them. Um, my question for you is what, what do you have in the future? What do you have any big projects going on? Um, I think my big project is with probably, um, the school, you know, I, um, I went to LECOM for, um, medical school in Bradenton and I've been a, a preceptor with them now for, uh, probably like eight years. And now I'm a uh, assistant uh, dean of clinical education. And so um, I love being involved in, you know, education with students. And, um, you know, it's a big jump for me. Um, but, you know, I'm happy to take on the challenge. And, and you know, I love the people that I work with in, in my school. It's great. Um, you know, they give me, you know, time to do some of these ventures and, um, you know, with, with our online electives that we had because of COVID with doing the clinical reasoning, they've kind of given me reins to, you know, um, make some cool additions to the curriculum so students can kind of learn. Um, so it's going to be a fun year. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again for spending a little time your day to, to talk to me and present some of these really amazing tweets. And I really hope people check them out and enjoy them. Well, thank you again, guys, for another episode of Med Twitter this week. You can check us out on Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, um, podcasts, and a multiple all the podcast sources, including Apple Podcasts. I hope you like, subscribe, comment, do all the fun stuff you do. All the tweets and threads will be in the description or threaded below. So have a good one. See you next week. Bye.